Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. You certainly know all about uh, Jeff's career as a successful motion picture television and stage actor. Now, those are very different disciplines, mm -hmm. and uh, not everyone can successfully move between them. True. And you've been able to do that. I have fooled many people. Oh, come on. No, it, it, it comes from the same place, but yeah, it's, it's like, you know, learning a different language, and once you know the language, then it's, you're okay. Well, uh, Jeff's from Chelsea, Michigan, which is a small town west of Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, he went off to uh, fame and fortune, and as many people have, and they're remembered in their small towns, when people say, oh, so-and-so's from here, and that's the end of that. But that wasn't the end of that. Do you mind if I tell everybody? Tell everybody. Okay. Uh, Include the police reports. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you hang out at the A&W? Uh, yes. Yeah I, yeah, I figured you would. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> Jeff Daniels did leave town and go off and become famous and successful. Then returned back to the town, which at the time, like many small towns in the Midwest, had you know, kind of a semi-abandoned, you know, center of the town. It had seen better days. Um, about the only distinguishing characteristic was the uh, place where the Jiffy Mixes come from that mm -hmm. you buy in the supermarket, you know, the, to make muffins and stuff like that. And he opened a theater. Hmm. And after he opened the theater, people opened restaurants. And after people opened restaurants, other people opened up shops. And it revitalized his hometown. Wow, you brought the town back? And it is now, we see he's being... Modest. He's being know. modest. But the it's fact true. of the matter is that those other businesses didn't exist before. Right, right. Uh, And Chelsea, Michigan is now a destination town. People who uh, visit the area want to go to Chelsea, Michigan. And it started, the genesis of this was... The uh, theater that Jeff, the professional theater that Jeff Daniels. Purple uh, Rose Theater Company, named after the Purple Rose of Cairo, the movie I got to do with Woody Allen. Um, and it, you know, I, 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 I look back now, and the first move would have been okay, open a restaurant with your name on it and make money. But that's not what you did. It's not what I did. I didn't even think like that. And I saw a building and a parking lot next to it. I was creatively, I was bored. I was playing way too much golf. And I just said, let's get back into what I do, which is theater and all that. So I made it this home for Michigan actors, writers, designers, playwrights who didn't get the breaks I did, mm -hmm. who didn't go to New York or L.A. or did and it didn't work. And they came back. They could still do it, but just nobody cares. So... I made. I built a building, built a theater. Said, "This is your home. I'll teach you everything I know, and in particular, I'll teach that 21-year-old kid that I used to be, who got in his car and drove away, knowing really not a lot, except that he knew how to be on stage and do it. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was good at it for some reason. I'll teach you that kid everything I know, so that when you go to New York or L.A., you'll know more than I did." And That's quite a story. Oh, it's an amazing story. It really is. It is. And the, the mayor, the mayor has. We did a documentary because we're 27 years old now. We did a 25th anniversary document, and the mayor got in there and he said, "A two stoplight town, Norman Rockwell, right? Mm -hmm. And 25 businesses. When we opened the theater in '91, 10 of them were closed. Right. Now they're all full. Bed and breakfast. The hotels came in." Restaurants, everything. The mayor said it brings in almost four million dollars to this little town every year. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's what a kid who graduated from, you know, the local high school mm -hmm. and went off to seek his uh, fame and fortune. That's what he did for his hometown. I mean, that is an incredible accomplishment and something to be extraordinarily I proud of. I have a lot of help with a lot of great people who actually run it now, but uh, I'm still involved. I write plays for it. And uh, I enjoy it, but I also enjoy seeing them succeed, seeing the spotlight hit them and the audience stand up for them while I'm sitting in the back going, good, this one worked. And uh, you and, uh, well, it's the Jeff Daniels and Ben Daniels band. That's special, yeah. 
I've been I'm on the road with my son's band. I, you know, first of all, an actor who has a guitar, you should run for the hills. You know, William Shatner did <laughs> did us no favors whatsoever. God bless Bill, but you know, and 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 it's you know, and it's and it's never been a money grab for me. It's just been something that I really love doing. I've studied with people like Stefan Grossman. Keb Moe's been real helpful to me. Uh, I just have been in a student of the acoustic guitar, and then my son got involved and his band, and we've toured five or six times. We got albums up there, and uh, we're at the City Winery Wednesday, t uh, tonight. Yeah, and, yeah uh, which is a great place. Mm -hmm. I've been there a bunch of times, had a residency. When I was doing God of Carnage on Broadway, they gave me a once-a-month residency, which I enjoy. I just enjoy being live in front of people. I make them laugh, make them cry, and, and, and the expectations, again, are so low when an actor gets on stage <laughs> that uh, it's not too hard to exceed them. See, he's another. He's very modest. He's another modest, self-effacing guy. Yeah, I just set it up. I just <laughs> set it up. <laughs> uh, well, the New York Times. Listen to, to the to the, the 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 New York Times comment. Um, uh, recalling John Prine. Whoa. Uh, Daniels is a semi-autobiographical yarn spinner in the mode of. Mr. Guthrie, and the much-missed Steve Goodman. Stevie Goodman. Uh, wow. the, I saw him at the bottom line in the late 70s. Oh, so, I so did Stevie I. Stevie do that. I go, whatever that is, I want to learn how to do something like and, that. And everybody knows one of Steve Goodman's songs. He wrote uh, uh, City of New Orleans, which was, of course, recorded you know, hundreds of times, but was a huge hit for uh, Arlo Guthrie and for Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and he lived in Brooklyn for a while. Uh, but you're going on stage tonight with your son's band, but right now you're in our studio just sitting on a stool with a guitar. Mm-hmm. I'll give you one. Here's a, here's a, I, I made a movie with Clint Eastwood called Blood Work, and in the movie, Clint has a gun. And No. Uh, I know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm the bad guy. And, uh, and I got shot and killed by Clint Eastwood. Now, there are not a lot, lot of actors. Well, maybe there are a lot of actors. But if you're one of the actors who got shot and killed by Clint Eastwood, you are in a select group. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So after he shot and killed me that night, I went back to the trailer and I wrote this. Okay. Thank you. share of brushes with greatness but with all humility i would have to rate this the biggest of the big the best of them all my dream came true with a little telephone call the end of my line no joking was the good the bad the ugly the king of the unspoken make my day blow me away goddamn dirty airy blue said, got this little project, got this little part about a serial killer with a cold heart. I said, Mr. Eastwood, I'd be so honored to play a bad guy. The only thing that'd make it better would be if I, you know, got to die. He said, well, if I had to guess off the top of my head, when all said and done, one of us is going to be dead. Take my damn boy away, got him. Dirty Harry Blue 30, 30 44 Pull that trigger, Clint Give me what for I'm a wanted man Dead or alive Now don't give a damn If it was six shots or five Well, the closer we got to my Fateful day The more he'd stare And the less he'd say I thought this is only a movie, right? Couldn't help but feel Something about this was a little too real When they put on my makeup For the very last time Even the makeup girl said It's a good day to die Make my day blow away Got that dirty air blue 30, 30, 44 Pull that trigger, clean. Man, dead or alive 
But I don't give a damn if it was six shots or five. Well, the sound man said we're rolling. Props gave him his gun. Someone yelled, action, take one. He slipped off his shades and he squinted those eyes. I tried to tell the truth, but all that came out were lies. I said my final line, Clint said his. Then he cocked back that hammer like he won't go miss. I wanted to cry like a baby, squeal like a pig. I was roasting like a marshmallow at the end of his twig. I was shaking like a leaf when his upper lip curled. When he pulled that trigger, now leaving this world. I thought, wait a minute. To hell with the Oscar. The Academy, that little gold statue would be wasted on me. So my dream came true out in Hollywood when I got killed by Clint Eastwood. Make my day, Louis. That was not bad. That was hilarious. I love the the marshmallow on the stick. That's a prime line I I ever heard. I mean, that is a great (sighs) line. It's Jeff Daniels at the City Winery tonight. Looking at at, at your long, long list of credits, I have to just admit to having a, a soft spot inside my soul for radio days for obvious for obvious reasons. Yeah, sure. You know, a, a great film. And uh, because, well, I came here in 1974. Uh, Shelley came in 77. 77. You came here in 76. Uh, there, when, I, when I arrived here, there were still some old timers around who remembered those radio days that were featured in that film. When you'd uh, go to... Uh, the go to 30 Rock and it'd be, you know, dramas rehearsing in this yeah. studio and, and Toscanini would be in another studio yeah. getting the orchestra ready to go and just how much fun. Pretty exciting. That that all was. And uh, and and you are now, speaking of things that are exciting, uh, up for two Emmys. I am. A lead actor and supporting actor. Is, is, is there a problem with being nominated twice in the same year? <laughs> oh, probably, you know. <laughs> Yeah, competing uh, with yourself. Well, yeah, it's yeah, two categories. Yeah, yeah. look, if you want, I'm sure, you, if you're going to rent a tux and, and ride in somebody else's limo, you may as well, uh, you know, win. That would be nice. But uh, it's first, it's an honor to get two nominations for two different projects in the same year. I and, might split my vote, but at the end of the day, if 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 I win one, that would be great. If you win two, which is pretty unlikely, that that um, you know, then you've, I don't know, set a new record or yeah, something. Yeah, but to show how the world is changing, uh, one of the uh, nominations is for a, uh, uh, a performance on Hulu and the other's on Netflix. Yeah. That's the future. A few years ago, nobody heard of Hulu right. or Netflix. No, see, I've been doing TV for since the late 80s. <clears throat> I would do um, TV movies. I would do, HBO was doing things. I did things with Brian Dennehy and stuff. I, I, I always thought i end up in television. I didn't buy the fact that I was making movies. I just didn't buy it. I didn't look like Clooney. I didn't look like Richard Gere. I just didn't think that w- would last. And so I always had a foot in television and the stage. And then when Gandolfini did Sopranos, mm-hmm. he changed the landscape of what a lead actor or lead character could be, the anti-hero. And, and that changed things. And then here comes not only HBO and Showtime, but here comes Netflix, here comes Hulu. And what happened was all the writers went there mm-hmm. because they're, they're respected. They're given creative freedom. They're going, here's the money, do what you do which is different than in Hollywood, which is here's the money, do what the junior executives up there want you to do so that the marketing department can market this, mm-hmm. which is that you're, that's, you know, you're just selling soap at that point. There's a great uh, daily blog um, online by a writer named Ken Levine uh, in Hollywood who um, wrote the uh, O'Mash, uh, Cheers, Frasier, uh, but he talks about how that world has evolved and what it's like now. And it does sound very difficult dealing with, as you said, the junior executives at the networks. Yeah, I mean, I was ready to get out. I was ready to, all right, Dumb and Dumber, and that'll be on the tombstone. It's been a good run, thanks a lot. And then Netflix and Hulu came along, and suddenly they need actors. 
they need actors. They need actors who can handle a godless, which is uh, the Netflix show, which is seven hours. That's a seven-hour movie in my world. Mm -hmm. That's a, you're shooting the novel. And as an actor, you get to do more than you would if it were a 100-minute movie. So I, I love it. The only, the only uh, compromise, which I don't think is a compromise, is, is you got to be good on take one and take two. We don't have time for you to, you know, warm up and learn your lines in front of the camera. Now in take 12, you're ready. You won't last on a show that, like Newsroom. You just won't last. you got to be good right away. And but it's that's just, great. It's a good challenge for you. Show up ready. Well, yeah. newsroom. And, you know, doing Clint Eastwood. I mean, that's where I, I really learned it. Clint does one take. Hmm. One take. He wow. wants it to happen for the first time in front of the camera. Boom. I don't care if you're method. I don't care. If, one take. Once in a while, you'll do two. He'll go, you want another shot at that? And you get two. But it's one. And if you can, you can learn how to do that, then you're ready for Netflix and Hulu and all of that. And you mentioned the newsroom. And there was, of course, a 2013 Emmy Award for that, for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Yeah, and, Aaron um, Sorkin. And uh, our our boss, uh, Eric Wellman, Big E, who's you know the person that we report to, he almost just went and in, plunged into a depressed period of mourning when uh, Newsroom was over. He just loved the show. He would come in talking about it all the time. It, uh, he Aaron is really he can really um, hit the target when he when he gets uh, like he did in Newsroom and and the West Wing as well. I remember telling him. Before we started Newsroom, I said, I used to watch West Wing just to watch the writing. I love when the writer's in the scene. I love Patty Chayefsky was in the scene and Network. He was in there with William Holden and Faye Dunaway. That's okay. Preston Sturgis is in the scene. Woody Allen is in the scene. Uh, I've always loved it when I could, uh, when I knew it was being, had, had been written and actors were executing a written script. I've always loved that. It's Jeff Daniels with his most recent album, Simple Truths. Simple Truths with Brian Vander Ark. He and I sat down, Brian of the Verve Pipe, and uh, he's in Michigan. We made something together. And then I, a lot of what we do tonight at City Winery is uh, uh, off the live acoustic sitting tour that I did with ben, ben, ben Daniels' band, my son's band. Last November, October, we toured, and then we just recorded the last couple of shows, and uh, it's up there. Okay, well, the website is jeffdaniels.com. That's easy to remember. Facebook is Jeff Daniels Music. Twitter, at Jeff and what do you call that little thing? Underscore? Underscore. Jeff underscore <laughs> Daniels. <laughs> That's the extent of my social I, media yeah. knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> YouTube, official Jeff Daniels. And there's, of course, uh, the bendanielsband.com website. City Winery. I love the Brussels sprouts there. Uh, <laughs> they're really Come good. Come for the Brussels sprouts. Stay for the music. <laughs> they're really good. Uh, and I guess there's a few tickets left. Yeah, there's some tickets. Okay, so and, that's and, it's a Wednesday night in New York. And and what do you have coming up acting wise? Uh, I'm very excited. I start uh, early September. Uh, we start rehearsals for To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. I'm wow. playing Atticus Finch. Aaron Sorkin again has adapted Harper Lee's novel. We open in December. Oh, how wow. exciting! <laughs> but, but also how intimidating. Not for Jeff Daniels. No, no but I mean, I, you know, because when you said Atticus Finch, I thought. Gregory Peck. Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, that just instantly popped into my head. And uh, that's a, a challenge. Great performance. He won an Oscar for it. Hit the delete button. Don't care. Okay. No, you can't. That's you can't. confidence. Okay, but... You, I, it's not confidence. It's just, that's just stuff that gets in the way. Um, Aaron and I are going to do what we think Harper would have done with it and mm -hmm. and uh, that's all and it's, uh, gregory peck is the is he was great he was terrific he was the only guy who did it mm. does that mean it's definitive we'll find out well not being an actor that's sort of because we're not uh you know that sort of thought process is something that's interesting to hear about i mean i i completely get it if you're doing stairway to heaven and and jimmy page did the solo and you're going to now reinvent that we're not reinventing it but um You'll recognize the book, that's for sure. Okay, and, and more so the book than uh, the movie. And, and when's when, December? Opens in December. Okay. We got to go. I know. We got to go. Have to. Yeah. Okay. That means we should pre-order the tickets uh -huh. now. Uh-huh. Okay, can you well, do I that? Well, I know somebody, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah oh, do okay. whatever you got to do. <laughs> okay, Jeff Daniels, thank you so much. Thank you. For dropping thank you for by with me. us. New York's Classic Rock. 
Q1043.